Welcome back to Anderson Acres. It's a hot, hot day outside, so I'm hiding inside. And I thought today we would talk about soil drainage. I know I've mentioned it here and there, but I don't think I've talked about just how important it is that your soil drains well. Soil drainage is just as important as soil fertility. So it's not something you can overlook if you expect your plants, whether they're flowers or food crops or whatever you're growing, if you expect your plants to grow well, you have to pay just as much attention to drainage as you do to fertility. Most plants don't like sitting in water. Now there are exceptions. There are what I like to call the bog plants that really like to just sit and be really, really wet. But for the most part, plants don't like it. They don't like it because their roots start to rot, they are deprived of vital oxygen needed, and they'll wither in soggy soil the same way they will if they're too dry. When you're planning a garden bed or a garden, you want to test the soil drainage. Now this can be a little bit annoying because it's not as easy as just running and grabbing a little kit like you would testing the pH. You actually have to dig and wait. So what you want to do is dig at least one hole, maybe more. I like to do three in slightly different areas so I can kind of get an idea. I like to space them apart. But dig at least one hole and it needs to be at least 12 inches deep. I tend to go 14 inches just to make myself happy. But at least uh, 12 inches, no more than 24. So you do need to dig um, a hole it doesn't have to be super wide. It can be just like four or six inches wide. As long as you can see to the bottom of your hole, you're fine. So definitely dig yourself a couple of holes. Fill these holes with water. I like doing 14 inches deep. So then I fill the holes with water right to the top. Okay. Let them drain. Note how long it takes for them to drain. Fill them again. Okay. That water should be completely gone in 24 hours. If the water has completely drained out of that hole in 24 hours, the drainage should be adequate for most plants. Okay, unless the plant specifically says it needs dry soil, you should be fine. If there's a few inches of water still in the bottom of your hole, plants that are kind of described as liking very well-drained soil might not thrive in that soil because it's a little bit too wet for them. In this case, you can improve your drainage by kind of digging out uh, some of your garden bed and adding a bunch of organic matter or even like some people like to add some type of pea gravel into like the bottom of their beds just to improve drainage. Um, there's a lot of ways you can do it depending on your area, depending on the type of soil you have, but you need to improve the drainage if you want most plants to grow well. But to know the exact materials you should add, you want to talk to a knowledgeable person at your nursery or garden center because they'll probably know. They'll probably know what materials are suitable for your area and what materials are available in your area. If more than just a few inches of water remain in the test hole after 24 hours, put your garden bed somewhere else or raise your garden bed and instead of putting it in the ground, put it up higher so that the water doesn't sit. Because if there's still quite a lot of water after 24 hours, there is no way that plants are going to do well in that. It's just too wet. And remember, depending on the year, if you have a really, really wet year, like we have a really wet year this year, sometimes even well-drained beds won't function well if you have a ridiculously wet year like we're raining all the time we have like multiple inches of rain every week so here even really well drained beds might not provide a great environment for most of your plants just because it's really sucked <laughs> but um when you test for drainage you might come across kind of this hard impervious almost like a shield but it's soil it's just like super compacted soil at the very bottom of your hole this is called hard pan now this might be natural in your area especially if you're down in the southwest but sometimes it is actually created by heavy equipment that has compacted the soil or by tilling up that soil when the soil was way too wet so then it just settles into like this hard 
almost rock-like substance, but it is still soil. It's called hard pan. If you discover a lot of hard pan, you're going to want to con consult a landscape contractor who can kind of help you out because hard pan is really hard to grow in. It really restricts the drainage of your soil. So you might want to talk to a landscape uh, contractor who can help you dig it out. We can hire to dig it out and almost replace parts of it if you are trying to make a garden bed in one spot. Or you can simply raise your garden beds up. If you have a lot of hard pan, sometimes it's just easier to build raised beds than it is to try to fix the soil you have. Here, we're on top of a quarry. So for us, a lot of times it's just better to build a 6 inch or 12 inch planter and just go with that or in the case of root crops we're growing like doing like four foot planters just because our soil conditions aren't necessarily conductive to growing things so you kind of have to be familiar with your own um, environment now remember that there are a lot of woodland species of flower and brush that thrive in soils that are really wet in the spring and the fall but they still need to be well drained in the summer so it's very difficult to get things to grow in soil that is not well drained. So address that issue before you start planting. Check and see how well your soil drains. And if it just doesn't, build a raised planter. It's just easier, I promise. Anyway, that is about it for us here today at Anderson Acres. I hope you have well drained soil and that your plants do thrive this summer. We'll see you tomorrow.